It's Victoria Day, so Monday, May the 23rd, and we've had an exciting weekend, I suppose, is the way to actually uh, state it. So Saturday morning, you saw our videos about planting potatoes, um, so we got that uh, done. And as we were uh, having lunch, we ended up with uh, derecho, uh, a windstorm coming through that caused some damage. So I'm just going to document uh, what actually happened. Um, so our awning that was down at the time while we were having lunch um, has been torn off and uh, it's sitting up on top of the trailer at this point in time. But you can see that this piece is the only piece on this side that remains uh, so we'll have to replace that. The awning itself is torn. The retrieval system is up there, but I don't know if we can actually make use of it. Um, there's the rest of the, the awning from both sides. And there's a hole on the, uh, uh, the roof, um, so in the roof system, so I'll have to patch that up. And then there's a hole where the... Uh, um, there's a, a sunlight uh, above the bathroom and uh, that's cracked and it'll need to be replaced at some point in the future as well. Beyond that, um, the little greenhouse that we have here uh, was also uh, blown over. Uh, we didn't lose any plants. Um, they were inside, but uh, they all survived and you can see them sitting on the table there. Um, the greenhouse itself has one cracked uh, connector that we'll have to uh, probably tape up. Um, but uh, we're probably going to take the greenhouse down because the plants are going into the ground uh, sometime this week, hopefully. And uh, beyond that, we lost some trees, etc. So I'll show you a little bit of that. There's more trees on the other side that uh, came down. So no huge damage. But you can see a little bit of the force of the wind in terms of pushing trees over and all that kind of stuff. So you can see the tree that's been split here. And then this one has been uh, blown over. So half of it is, is now out of the ground and the other half is blown over uh, to its edge. And then we've had a number of trees on the other side of the, the, uh, the swale and the berm that came down as well. Um, they're in the meadow on the other side. In terms of the house, the house itself stood with no problems. Um, that's exactly what I would expect because the house is solid, it's concrete, uh, it's not going anywhere. We did, however, um, blow out the, uh, the big window in uh, the living area uh, by the kitchen. Uh, where it was covered with plywood and so I went in and just did some some um, cover-up uh, to get it uh, back into uh, working order. Um, beyond that we also had uh, a power line go down. We lost power here for the trailer for about 10 minutes or so. Uh, it turns out that there's a wide swath on either side of us both to the east and to the west, or to the north and the south, I guess, um, it, that is uh, uh, still without power, but uh, uh, we maintain power here. So you start to wonder, you know, what kind of people are actually living on our road that we end up with power when everybody else around us doesn't have power. Uh, the city of Peterborough uh, is out of power and still is. Uh, on Monday, even though the the wind went through on uh, Saturday. Um, so no major, major uh, damage here, but uh, it was an interesting experience uh, trying to hold on to an awning as it was flying in the breeze like a sail. I had visions of us uh, going over the top of the trailer. Anyways, that didn't happen, uh, but th we did lose the awning. Anyways, we'll get it uh, fixed and bring you up to date as to what's going on. We're hoping to actually get another row of uh, peas and uh, 
uh, cucumbers in. So we'll be doing that this afternoon. Uh, Trish is starting to uncover it, um, trying to get the water off the, uh, the tarp. And uh, we'll keep that one documented as we're going along. Um, we still have uh, Albie and Rachel is with us. Uh, she's going home. And that brings you up to date. The rest you'll see on time lapse uh, on the other camera. Right, so we've got the uh, the row in, the infrastructure in, and we're ready to start planting. And uh, just to, to show you what we've got, so we've got T poles um, and uh, electric conduit. So that's the conduit that's running across there, and it's just going into uh, one and a half inch uh, piece of uh, uh, PVC piping uh, connector, a T T connector and uh, that's what we've got at the top of each one of these poles and um, they are the the poles are driven into uh, the dirt so we purchased a uh, a driver a t-pole driver which basically is a tube with handles on it and uh, a closed off end and so trisha's laying out where the cucumbers are going to be and then we'll put a string from the, uh, the actual electrical conduit down into the soil and uh, the string will be a piece that uh, they're tied to. Do you want to describe a little bit what you're doing, Trish? Oh, well, I think you did, but yeah, just, just planting planting them in there, so underneath there, so we can, yeah, put the string and it will grow up the string and it's just a simple trellising system to give the cucumbers uh, support while they're growing for their eight or ten weeks that they're growing and producing cucumbers and we're planting them directly into the topsoil the triple mix that we plant put put on top of the compost and uh, that's sitting on top of the uh, the aerated soil that we uh, use the uh, broad fork on to actually put put some air into the actual materials. So Trisha's just planting out the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They've got about eight um, English cucumbers, and then I've got four slicing cucumbers. I don't have any pickling cucumbers because last year I did. I pickled some. I still have the pickles so I probably don't need any. 
We're not big, big pickle well. people. Maybe when the grandchildren come over. Yeah. But we haven't got our house yet. And to be honest, you can buy pickling cucumbers by the bushel cheaply in the fall. So. At least at this point. At this point. So. This is more for just fresh eating for us. And so down here, you want to describe what we've got here? Yeah, so here we have, so we're going to plant peas along this fence and they'll trellis up the uh, chicken wire. And then in the shade of the peas that we'll hear, I'll plant probably spinach and lettuce, maybe Swiss chard, something like that, that wants more uh, So this shade. is facing to the south. The south is over there. That house that you can see off in the distance. And there's the sun going down in the west. So the shade for most of the afternoon when the sun is up is going to be on, on side. this side, uh, the Trisha side of uh, the actual uh, posts themselves. So the peas will be planted on this side. So they'll be uh, providing some shade to the spinach and to the lettuce and other things that we're actually going to be planting in here. And before they get larger, the it's hopefully still cool enough for the spinach to survive on its Well, peas shade. grow quite quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. So we did it last year. It was quite successful. Yeah. We had, I think we had Swiss chard by the, by the um, peas and it was, it was very it, it, good. And not, not the rhubarb type. <laughs> well, we'll tell you about our, our escapades with red rhubarb Swiss chard uh, if we haven't already. Anyways, so that gives us our, we're up to four and a half rows, almost halfway through our 10 rows of the actual planting. And uh, we'll get some more done uh, during the week this week. Um, even though we had a bit of a setback uh, uh, over the, the weekend with the, uh, the wind. Um, anyways, we'll bring you up to date soon.